When Paradise Fibers sent me an eco-friendly nylon for spinning, I was really curious, what is this all about? Well, we are going to spin this fiber, we are going to talk about this fiber, and we are going to do a full project with this fiber. I am so excited to share this with you, so let's get spinning. Nylon. <laughs> what comes to mind when you think of nylon? For me, I think of really uncomfortable stockings, <laughs> hosiery, <laughs> that's what comes to mind. Because when DuPont first invented nylon in the 1930s, it was debuted as an alternative to silk stockings. And it was really popular when it first came out on the market. Women showed up in droves to buy nylon stockings. And the invention of nylon and other synthetic fibers has had a huge impact on the world, not just the impact it had in World War II and going to the moon, but synthetic fibers have had a huge impact on fashion as well. And not always a good thing because these synthetic fibers don't really biodegrade very well. They go to a landfill, and they're there for a really, really, really long time, like generations long time. This eco nylon has been developed to biodegrade in certain conditions faster than other nylons or synthetic fibers. In anaerobic, this is important, in anaerobic circumstances like a landfill, this is going to biodegrade within five years. So one of the questions when this came out and, and people were looking at this saying, what if biodegrades, what does this mean? Are, are my projects going to fall apart? Is it going to attract bacteria and rot when I put it in the washing machine? And no, it won't. It needs to be in an oxygen free environment for it to go into the biodegrade process. So in the meantime, when we are using it, it's going to have the properties of nylon. So it's going to be strong and durable, but it's not really going to have the same kind of feel like wool. It's not a really fluffy or fuzzy fiber. It's sort of a strong, dense, possibly even ropey fiber if we overspin this. So I think that this is a great fiber to use in certain circumstances, but it's not something that's going to be a replacement for wool, for instance. Um, so I think that when we choose a project for this fiber, we have to be very deliberate and specific in what project we choose because we have to work with the properties that this has. We can't make it do something that it's not. And what it is is nylon. But I do think it's great to have an eco-friendly alternative in the realm of synthetics. I'm all for innovation, so let's experiment with this fiber and see what we can do with it. The staple length of this fiber is pretty long. Several inches. So we have a good uh, long distance that we want to keep our hands apart so we're not holding on to both ends of the same fiber while we spin. So I pulled some out on the end and just folded it over my leader to get started. I'm going to turn this up to just a little past uh, the halfway. If you're spinning this and you want it to remain soft, you'll also have to be very careful to manage your twist because this really doesn't have any forgiveness in it. Once you overspin, it just gets really tough like rope, like a nylon rope, which could be a great use for this if you needed some yarn that was exceptionally strong. Overspin it, see what you can do with that. I think that could be a cool project as well. But for my bag, I don't need it to be extremely ropey. So I'm gonna make sure I'm drafting quickly for the amount of twist that I'm putting in so that it doesn't build up too much twist. I also want to mention that the feeling of this fiber while spinning is a little bit squeaky. So if that plasticky feeling is something that is not great for you, if that's a sensory experience that you don't like, this might not be the fiber for you. I think this is a very niche 
fiber. I'm happy to experiment with it. I think it's great that we have this available, um, but I can say that it's not going to be for everyone. Something that will also make this fiber easier for drafting is to pre-floof it just a little bit. I'm not pre-drafting, I'm not stripping it down. You can if you want to, but for me, I'm not stripping it down um, and I'm not pre-drafting it out. I am floofing it sideways and that is giving me the fluff that I need to make sure I can have everything drafting. I'm sure if you, if you did strip it down, um, that would probably be easier to manage, but I, I just personally tend not to do that. Um, that's just me, but I, I feel like floofing it sideways is more helpful than pre-drafting it lengthwise. So that is a tip that might really help as you're spinning this fiber. Since nylon is known for its strength and durability, one of the places that you often see nylon used is in bags. I think that a bag would be a great project. I'm really enjoying my Nano e-spinner, and I think that it's kind of fitting that we have an innovative fiber that we are spinning with an innovative e-spinner. And so these are two of the bobbins that I have spun up so far. I have both bobbins finished. These are just the cutest, most adorable little bobbins. Uh, but this is about 50 grams on each of these bobbins. And we'll see how consistent I was when I apply them together. I talk so much on this channel about how I think that spinning should be accessible and that there are so many tools that you can DIY yourself. And right now, I'm finally about to show you my DIY Lazy Kate. I have just a dowel stick. You can get these at craft stores or wherever. I don't even actually know where this one came from. <laughs> but it is a perfect fit for these two bobbins to slide right on there. And then I have a shoe box and this shoe box, I cut the lid off of it and it already has these two little divots on each side and the dowel fits right in there. And now I have a DIY Lazy Kate super easy. So I am going to ply this on my Ashford E spinner, um, mainly because this would be a couple more bobbins on the Nano just because these bobbins are already full, so I can't double what's there. The Ashford E spinner has plenty of room on those bobbins, so I'm gonna get plying. This shoebox setup actually works best if the uh, threads are coming up off of the bobbins rather than along the bobbins because this is a way that they can get really tangled. But I did want you to see that set up so I'm gonna go ahead and put that on the floor now. And let's just chat for a second about plying this fiber. It is definitely different than plying with wool. This fiber is not going to be able to be uh, set like you would wash the wool and spin it out and thwack it. Um, if you do that with this, it's it's not going to change anything <laughs> about it. It's a synthetic and you can't really set a, a synthetic like you can set a wool. So that is something to keep in mind in terms of the twist energy because we might end up with something that has a lot of energy, that's very energetic. Which is what I have. <laughs> this has some energy to it. Quite a bit actually. But, I like the way the yarn looks. It's making these nice little beads along the length of the yarn as they kind of pop in together on the ply. And I think it looks really pretty. I think that having uh, 
a little extra twist and the ply is going to be okay for this fiber. It really is such a drapey fiber. I think that's going to give it just a little bit more elasticity, a little more bounce. And that's a good thing for um, doing these little weaving samples. And I, and I like the feel of it with a little extra bounce to it. So, um, smidge extra twist it is. Well, I don't know if I measured wrong or my consistency was just horrible because I have a bunch left on this bobbin. Or maybe it just looks like more than it usually is because this bobbin is so teeny and cute. <laughs> but this is what it all looks like plied up on the bigger bobbin. But we're not done yet. I am actually going to make this yarn into a cabled four ply. It's not really a four ply because it doesn't have four separate bobbins coming together. So a cabled yarn in this case is going to be a two ply yarn folded back over on itself and plied one more time. So let's get this off onto the ball winder and I will then ply this one more time from a center pole ball. Uh, because I spun originally in an S direction clockwise, then I plied that in a Z direction, anti-clockwise, and now I am folding it back on itself. I'm going back to the S direction, which is clockwise. So it's a little bit to keep straight, but this is how you can make a cabled yarn. And cabled yarns are very strong, and it's also helping me to get this thin, slippery, silky kind of fiber into a thicker, yarn without uh, risking that it's a yarn that's going to fall apart. This yarn is going to be very strong, which is what I need it to be for constructing a bag out of it. Bags take a lot of abrasion and uh, they have to be able to work hard. So this is going to be a hard working yarn. All right, let's get cable plying now. After plying this, I did wind it off onto my skein winder. I feel like for the final pass, since this isn't a fiber that can be washed and thwacked to set it, I feel like just letting it have that space to get uh, off of the bobbin and then wound onto the skein winder, I feel like it does just help sort of evenly distribute if there is any spot that did build up a little too much twist. Kind of helps everything just even itself out. And this fiber is so slippery that I'm sure at this point nothing is hung up or stuck on anything else. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, it came out to about a 10 or an 11-ish Here's what it looks like. It's going to be very strong and sturdy and perfect for this bag that I am going to make from it. So I am going to get weaving on my Zoom Loom.
Well, the first one's done and it's looking good. It feels good. It's very sturdy and strong. It was a little tough to get it uh, all woven up. The last couple passes were a little tight. So I'm gonna have to make sure that when I wrap it onto the loom at the beginning, I really leave plenty of room because this does not have any stretch in it. And once you get to the end, all of your wiggle room for the over-unders has been used up, <laughs> but I managed. So I have a whole other stack to go, and I guess I should actually put this into a ball now and get busy on that. So I'll see you when I am ready to assemble the bag. I'll be right back. And I'm back with the finished bag. And before I show you this, I have to say, it's a little smaller than what I kind of set out. I think what I set out to do was ambitious. I wanted to make a reusable market bag. What I ended up making <laughs> was this little drawstring bag. Uh, mainly the reason is that we, surprise, are going to be moving and just a lot of things happened over the summer um, and I didn't have time to do the larger project that I wanted to try, but I did at least want to get something finished uh, because I had this cute little stack of squares. So I took the squares that I made on the Zoom Loom, I laid them out, and then I just stitched them together. I went across and then I stitched them up and down <laughs> and I made this cute little drawstring pouch and I I like it. I like how it feels. It feels thick and it feels sturdy and I have the perfect plan for what to do with this. So here's the bag and I just made a little drawstring up at the top and I think this is gonna be perfect to hang on the end of my spinning wheel so I can put all of my spinning wheel things in there. I'm going to put the spinning wheel oil, but I'll keep it in a bag just because if it leaks, that would not be a great time. I have my wraps per inch, my favorite orifice hook, a protractor to check twist angles. Uh, this is a little card. It's like a magnifier so I can see my yarn up close. I have a ruler and I have a spinner's yarn gauge to keep my spinning consistent and now I can just hang this on the end of my spinning wheel then when I go from one spinning wheel to another I just have to grab my little bag and I don't have to find everything that's scattered everywhere <laughs> so this will be very useful and because of putting it on a spinning wheel and using it a lot I'm gonna see how this fiber wears. Is it gonna get fuzzy, pill? What's what's gonna happen to it? It's gonna get a lot of abrasion and a lot of use, especially with the drawstring area. So this is definitely an experiment to see what happens. Um, so we'll have to do some updates on that. Maybe if you think of it, ask me in a live stream and we'll check it out and see how we're doing. All right, friends, thank you so much for joining me on this adventure. Check out some more pictures of these projects that I have over on Instagram. If you have spun nylon, let me know what project you made with it. I would love to hear all about it. All right, friends, happy spinning.